Got here a 72 Fender Super 6 and the classic symptom of scratchy volume and scratchy tone pots. Treble middle bass have got a little bit of scratch on them. It's real apparent on the volume. And what that is, is DC present where it not ought to be. Ought not to be, rather. A little less apparent on the normal channel, but it is there. So let's take some measurements. We have the volumes off. All right, so here where we have, should have zero vol volts, we have 172 millivolts. Let me move this so you can see it better. Should be zero volts DC, zero volts DC. That's good. Zero volts DC, almost half a volt. Should be zero volts DC, two and a half, just about. 260 millivolts. Good on that. Almost three quarters of a volt. I bet we're going to have a high reading right here at this eyelet. Look at that. Almost nine volts. You could power a lot of devices off that. 8.67 volts. You could run a tube screamer off that. As I've mentioned in other videos, conventional wisdom would be that you have leaking caps. Conventional wisdom would say that this cap, this cap, this cap, oh, this cap, and this cap, this cap, this cap, this cap, this cap, they're all leaking and need to be replaced. And so typically someone would take these caps out and put in, say, an orange drop. And maybe the problem would go away for a little bit, and they would think that it was a bad cap, and they've solved that. Um, that problem will come back. It's probably not a bad cap. It's possible, but not very likely, except in the case of those two silver micas. We'll check those. Um, what actually happens is you have leakage in the board from eyelet to eyelet. Where'd my little pointer go? What usually happens is because the board gets full of moisture and contaminants. Voltage leaks from one eyelet to the next. So here from this eyelet, which has got a high voltage on it, it's very physically close to this eyelet, which is where we got that almost nine volts. That's, so this is the most exaggerated example where we have 350 volts here and 8.7 volts here. Can't really see where I'm going. So 350, 8.7. And it's right here in the board between it. And that also leaks out to here. And it leaks out to here and even to here. So let me uh, see what I can do about eliminating that. But I've got a hundred, half a volt measured on the board itself. I'm measuring on the fiber board. When I first measured this before I started rolling camera, it was like 60 volts here. It took a while to dissipate to the board. So we got half a volt just in the uh, board itself. That's dissipating now. That's good. So what happens if I remove this solder and clean this area of the board with alcohol? Okay. Removed all the solder here, and I soaked this area of the board with alcohol. And now on the board here, I have barely any voltage at all. At the eyelet, I have almost no voltage at all. But at other parts of the board, you hear that noise as I move it. Six volts in the board right over here. That's some serious dirt over here by this. Treble cap on the board, We've got a volt over here by the where the uh, normal channel comes out. I've got a volt or by this base cap. I've got a quarter of a volt, two volts here. So I need to do a lot more cleaning because uh, you never want to have any voltage let alone the six or seven volts I was getting over here. 
in what's supposed to be your insulator. So let me report back after I do some more work. If I, do, if I show every step in this, this will be a three hour video. And while I like doing the videos to give out information and explain my, my thought process and what I'm actually doing for a client's amp, I don't want the entire repair to take eight hours because I'm showing every little bitty thing. All right, much, much cleaning later. All the DC is gone from all those nodes. and You can see the board looks a lot cleaner. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where the board looked okay until I started to clean it. And the entire thing just had a film of old flux and dirt and sludge. And uh, you just, a scummy conductive path and it was on both boards. And I got it all out of the way and uh, the amp sounds a lot better now. There's no more scratchiness on the volumes or on the tone circuit. And the amp is sounding pretty good. So I think the owner will be very happy. And uh, after la watching all the Beatles stuff the past two nights, uh, I'll try not to play the same uh, four songs for six hours like they did.